What you do not want done to yourself, do not do to others. The Confucian Analects. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. Nos programs offer plusieurs langues. Veuillez visiter suprememastertv.com bar oblique schedule. Nuestros programs ofrecen varios idiomas. Visit suprememastertv.com bar inclina schedule. Nasze programs offer you wiele języków. Prosimy zobaczyć suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule. When they walk in the door, I will say to them, welcome to success. Marva Collins, the outstanding educational reformer, part one of two. Continue watching for Mrs. Collins' incredible life story. If you have the pleasure of visiting Guyana, the vibrant locals may greet you with a hearty, what the stories say, meaning how are you, in Guyanese Creole. Brave viewers, I am Mark. With great joy and love, the sincere people of Guyana wish you and your loved ones an abundance of blissfulness. We are delighted to have you join us for part one of the part two series entitled Marva Collins, the Outstanding Educational Reformer. Today is World Teachers Day, an international event launched by the United Nations Educational, Scientific and Cultural Organization or UNESCO in 1994. World Teachers Day commemorates UNESCO and ILO or International Labor Organization signing the recommendation concerning the status of teachers on October 5th, 1966. The agreement was a great step for teachers and a standard setting instrument that addresses the status and situation of teachers around the world. To celebrate this special day, we reflect on one distinguished educator's story. There is a brilliant child locked inside every student, Marva Collins. Born on August 31st, 1936 in Monroeville, Alabama, Marva Collins, whose maiden name was Knight, was an American teacher. In 1975, she started Westside Preparatory School, which served an impoverished community in Garfield Park, Chicago. Marva Collins became internationally renowned for developing her own educational methods and empowering her students. She has written books and manuals describing her history and methodology the 1981 biographical TV movie entitled The Marva Collins Story, starring Cicely Tyson and Morgan Freeman, was released as a tribute to her success. Marva Collins' family helped cultivate her strong desire for learning, independence, and achievement. Her father was an inspiration for her life's work. Each night, he would read newspapers, literature, and poetry with her. As a child, Marva Collins attended Bethlehem Academy, a strict one-room elementary school which proved to have an influence on the development of her educational methods in subsequent years. She was a graduate of Clark College in Atlanta, Georgia, where she studied secretarial sciences. From 1957, she enjoyed teaching, bookkeeping, shorthand, typing, and business law at Monroe County Training School. In 1959, Marva Collins moved to Chicago and worked as a medical secretary. There, she married and had two sons and a daughter. Although she has no teaching certificate, Mrs. Collins was hired to teach second grade in public schools in Chicago as a full-time substitute teacher for 14 years. Through her experiences in that teaching system, Ms. Collins found that the quality of education her own children were receiving deserved to be better. She was dissatisfied with its unfavorable treatment and attitude toward impoverished inner city students. Marva Collins disregarded the Board of Education's teaching guide and trusted her own experience. Rather than going by the public school's methods, which used books with pictures and dull workbooks, she developed her own teaching methods that truly really worked, using phonics to teach reading and adding literary classics and poetry into the curriculum. Mrs. Collins facilitated discussions of the readings and had students memorize poetry. She used positive methods of discipline to address misconduct. 
In the 1981 documentary Success, The Marvel Collins Approach, we see Marvel Collins in action in her West Side Preparatory School in Chicago, Illinois. When they walk in the door, I will say to them, welcome to success, say goodbye to failure, because here you are going to fail, I'm not going to let you fail, you're here to win, you were born to win, and if I have to care more about you than you care about you, that's the way it will be. This day has been given to me. This day has been given to me. Fresh and clean. Fresh and clean. I can either use it. I can either use it. Or throw it away. Or throw it away. I promise that it shall be used. I promise that it shall be used. Not lost. Not lost. I will be superior in my ability. I will be superior in my ability. In my thoughts. In my thoughts. In my deeds. In my deeds. And in my actions. And you must be. Let's take a moment to marvel at the inspiration surrounding us in God's creation. We will return shortly here on Supreme Master Television. Vegan, because you are beautiful at heart. Welcome back to Marvel Collins, the outstanding educational reformer, part one of two. After 14 years in Chicago's public school system, Marva Collins resigned. In 1975, she continued working with her teaching methods and a handful of elementary students in the basement of Daniel Hale Williams University. She worked tirelessly with these children who were regarded as uneducable by the public school system and achieved extraordinary results. The children were able to learn at an improved pace and gain self-confidence in the process. To support her theories, Marva Collins applied Stanford Binet tests, showing that all of the children improved in mathematics and reading significantly. Ms. Collins went on to open her own school on the second floor of her own home. She used 5,000 US dollars from her retirement fund to begin her educational program, teaching her own children and four other youngsters. Ms. Collins established the affordable private West Side Preparatory School in the West Garfield Park neighborhood. It began as a one-room, multi-grade private school. The government-funded Alternative Schools Network offered her financial assistance to start with four students, increasing to 20 within a year. The school was created for the purpose of teaching low-income African-American children. Basically, five years ago, I just felt that there were far too many children being recruited for failure, far too many excuses being used for not educating children. Living in this area myself, I really felt that somehow there were far too many lives just hanging out there in a perilous vacuum. So I decided that whatever I did, I could do no worse. So I decided to start my own school. Observers who were invited to sit in Marva Collins' classroom were amazed by the high-level curriculum she developed for students from ages 3 to 13. Each year, the students started with essays such as Ralph Waldo Emerson's Self-Reliance, then moved on to poetry, including works by Rudyard Kipling. Progressing to Plato's dialogues, the students were reading William Shakespeare's plays and reciting Geoffrey Chaucer's Canterbury Tales by second and third grade. Marva Collins perceptively suggested just the right book for each student to read next. Each student had to write a report every two weeks about the latest literature they read, present the report to the class, and answer questions raised by fellow students. First of all, teachers are so busy trying to make children conform to what they want them to be. And I think teachers are constantly trying to bend children to the way they think they should be. And I want to give children my love and my confidence, but I emphatically want them to have their own thoughts. I would hope their thoughts would be their own. Marva Collins was adamant that the best method for teaching the reading is phonics, which provides the student with the tools to read long words and syllables. A student taught using phonics can read and spell the words in his vocabulary with confidence, learning approximately 24,000 words by the end of fourth grade. Marva Collins used the Socratic method of teaching on her students. This method is a form of mutual argumentative dialogue between individuals based on asking and answering questions to encourage critical thinking and to draw out ideals. Her students were comfortable debating with one another. They learned how to think and to back up the claims with evidence from the test and from their own lives. It's always the children are the big U's and we are the little eyes. The teachers are not the big eyes in our school. 
No teacher in our school has a desk. We do not have a chair nor a teacher's desk. We walk all day. We serve the children. We find something positive to say about a child every morning. I like your gym shoes. I like your ribbon. I like your blue jeans. We, we find something to say good to a child every morning. That's just as important as the curriculum. What a beautiful way to start the day with grateful hearts. We look forward to learning more about the inspirational life story of the brilliant educator Marva Collins. Gracious viewers, it's been a pleasure to have your company today. Join us again on Sunday, October 10th, for part two of Marva Collins, the outstanding educational reformer. Coming up next is Mauricio Garcia Pereira, vegetarian, from Stolar House to Animal Liberation, part two of two, here on Supreme Master Television. May your day be blessed with happiness and peace of mind. Vegan, the extinguisher of hellfire. Our programs offer many languages. Please visit suprememastertv.com forward slash schedule and suprememastertv.com forward slash MOS.